I used to assist order. Now I fight for choice, freedom, chaos. Layla Hassan, 2018. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew and I am the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 47 and today we're going to talk about the modern day protagonist, Layla Hassan. The name Layla is Arabic in origin and it means knight. Her last name, Hassan, is also an Arabic name meaning beautifier. It stems from the poet Hassan bin Sabit, a companion of the prophet Muhammad. In Assassin's Creed, we first see Layla in Origins, where she is voiced by Chantelle Riley. Riley reprised her role as Layla in Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the released as of today Assassin's Creed Valhalla. While the character also appears in a flashback in the manga Assassin's Creed Blade of Shaojun and is set to be featured in the Tokyo 21 expansion of the board game Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. Before we get into the biography of Layla Hassan, I want to let you all know that if you are here looking for what she is up to in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, that will not be here. This is more of a lead-in to today's release of Assassin's Creed Valhalla than it is for spoiling the game. Layla was born in 1984 in Cairo, Egypt to Ashraf and Zinib Hassan. She migrated with her family to the United States two years later in 1986, eventually settling in Queens, New York. Here, she grew up with her younger brothers Rami and Caden, and eventually became a naturalized U.S. citizen. During childhood, she often drove her parents crazy by taking her toys apart instead of just playing with them like normal kids do. Throughout her childhood, she disliked things that seemed to work by magic and surprises. She also showed a penchant for rule-breaking from an early age, and even disliked the regimented nature of formal schooling. Because of her experiences with being punished for rule-breaking, her tendency to disregard authority was cemented early in her life. In 2000, Layla saw Rob Victoria in concert at Madison Square Garden, and even met the group backstage. After finishing high school, her father pressured her to continue her education, even though she had no plans of her own to do so, and received poor grades in school. She did show promise in engineering, though, and it led her father to enroll her in the University of California in Berkeley's electrical engineering program. In college, Layla remained uncommitted in her studies, but she did end up thriving in the campus's highly politicized atmosphere. This brought her into conflict with the school's administration, but also led her to meet Sophia Ricken, who was part of the delegation from the Stergo visiting the campus with the company's Young Innovators recruitment program. Intrigued with Layla's interest in technology, Sophia offered her a job with Abstergo, where she could work her way up to the Animus Lab. In 2006, when Layla was 22, she dropped out of UC Berkeley and joined Abstergo, first working in the IND division of Abstergo Fitness, and eventually making it into Abstergo's General Research and Development Division. Over the next 11 years, while Layla was at Abstergo, the one thing she wanted most to do was to work on the Animus Project but she was denied due to numerous incidents against Abstergo protocols. However, the company used several of Layla's ideas to adjust the Animus, though she remained unaware of the company's affiliation with the Templar Order. In January 2011, a revolution broke out in Egypt, causing Layla to ask for a leave of absence from Abstergo. She returned to Egypt and was present during the protest in Tahir Square. While Layla's fluency in Arabic was minimal, she managed to become strongly involved in the country's revolutionary youth culture. She helped others learn to communicate with social media and how to hack digital devices despite the widespread government censorship. After the 2013 coup d'etat that removed President Mohamed Morsi from power, Layla reluctantly decided to return to America to work with Abstergo once again. By 2014, Layla was back with the company and was in contact with Sophia Ricken to discuss her ideas on how to improve the Animus. Over the next few years, she connected with Deanna Geary, and the two became fast friends, even going so far as using one of Deanna's cross-stitch patterns to annoy Otto Berg over a parking spot. By the time that the Abstergo Foundation Rehabilitation Center was attacked in October 2016, Layla was working with Simon Hathaway, on a historical tactical team. 
Once on this team, she was issued her own portable animus and spent the next handful of months making modifications to the machine. When the rehabilitation center was attacked, all contact with Sophia Ricken had stopped, which ruined Layla's plan to present her nude animus design to Sophia. In 2017, Layla and Deanna were assigned to find and retrieve a historical artifact from the Katara Depression in Egypt. During this expedition, Layla found the mummies of Bayek Asiwa and Aya of Alexandria. After finding the first of the two mummies, Layla tested the modifications on her portable animus, but did not inform her superiors at Abstergo. While testing the animus to prove her worth to the animus project, Layla's refusal to check in with Abstergo led to the company deploying Sigma Team to find her and Deanna. Deanna was assaulted and seemingly killed in her hotel room, while Layla made use of the skills she obtained via the bleeding effect and dispatched her attackers. Eventually, Layla was found in the Katara Depression by the mentor of the Assassin Order, William Miles, who offered her a position within the Brotherhood. Faced with no other option, Layla agreed to work with the Assassins, but refused to formally join the group. By the end of 2017, though, not only would she be a member of the Assassins, she would also become friends with a handful of notable Assassins, including Charlotte de la Cruz, Arend Shute Cunningham, and Harlan Cunningham, and would be the leader of her own assassin cell. Part of her first mission as an assassin saw Layla travel to Quebec with Kayoshi Takakura to search for the Cathedral Basilica of Notre Dame de Quebec for a relic that once belonged to the Recollects, a French Reformed branch of the Order of Friars Minor, a Catholic religious order. Things ended up going sideways when they were confronted by Abstergo, though Kayoshi's past as a member of the Yakuza helped save the pair from danger. In 2018, Layla was searching for the staff of Hermes Trismegistus when she found Herodotus's lost histories and the spear of Leonidas. On the spear, she found two strings of DNA that, when put into her newly updated animus, allowed her to relive the memories of the Spartan mercenary Cassandra from the Peloponnesian War. Through the memories of Cassandra, Layla found the entrance to Atlantis, sailing from London to the coast of Saturini aboard the Altair II with her team which included Kayoshi, Alana Ryan, and ex-Abstergo employee and the leading expert on the bleeding effect, Dr. Victoria Bebo, hoping to find a secret underwater entrance to the ancient city. After finding the entrance, Layla explored the area, looking for a way to open Atlantis. Not finding anything, Layla re-entered the Animus to relive more of Cassandra's memories to find how to open the city. Once Layla found the knowledge of how Cassandra closed the city, Layla realigned the mirrors that reflected light beams into the main entrance, which opened the city. It was at this moment that Layla met Cassandra herself, being granted extremely long life from the staff of Hermes Trismegistus. Cassandra warned Layla that the Templars and Assassins represent order and chaos, and that if either side prevailed over the other, that it would result in the world's doom. Declaring Layla as the one who was prophesied to bring balance, Cassandra passed the staff to Layla. When she did this, Cassandra immediately lost her immortality and instantly faded to dust. Layla took the staff and returned to the Animus to synchronize the rest of Cassandra's memories. While Layla was synchronizing these memories, she encountered a hologram of the Isu Aletheia, who would guide Cassandra to hold the staff until she was meant to pass it off to Layla, whom Aletheia referred to as the Heir of Memories. When Layla exited the Animus, she heard Aletheia's voice and instructed her to identify the three symbols used to unlock the Great Seal of Atlantis. These symbols ended up being found within the tombs of Agamemnon, Orion, and Etiocles. During most of Layla's time reliving Cassandra's memories, Dr. Babo expressed concern for Layla's well-being, while Aletheia warned that someone she called the Interloper sought to stop her. Realizing that Phidias, an associate of Cassandra's, knew the meanings of the symbols, Layla relived the memories of Cassandra's brother, Alexios, whose DNA was the second strand that was found on the spear of Leonidas, and who was responsible for Phidias' murder. Reliving the memory forced Dr. Babo to pull Layla from the Animus, because she was worried of what the effects of reliving this brutal murder would have on Layla's mind. Shortly after Dr. Babo pulled Layla from the Animus, the two would lose contact with the Altair II, as it was attacked by Abstergo's Sigma team. Informed that the interloper was male by Aletheia and uncertain of her team's status, Layla went to unlock the seal 
realizing that Phidias' last words were the passwords to the seal. Just before heading through the seal, Layla heard from Alana Ryan that even though the crew of the Altair II fought off Sigma Team, their communications were being monitored, forcing them to go dark. After unlocking the Great Seal of Atlantis, Layla entered what looked like a giant throne room. Here, Layla met with Alethea, and then was joined by Dr. Babo, who was concerned with Layla's well-being. When Cassandra was first in this room, Alethea tasked her to enter simulations of Alethea's creation in order to master the staff. This was to accomplish two things, to teach Cassandra about the need of balance between order and chaos, and to teach Cassandra how to master the staff of Hermes Trismegistus, so that Layla could relive Cassandra's memories, so that she could also master the staff, without failing to its influence and corruption. As Layla relived Cassandra's memories of her exploring the simulation, Layla's behavior increasingly became more aggressive, causing Dr. Babo to forcibly pull Layla out of the animus, telling Layla that the bleeding effect was affecting her. This conversation caused Layla to get angry and accidentally kill the doctor with the staff. Horrified with what she had done, Layla was approached by Alethea, who claimed that Layla might not be the true heir of memories, after all, and that she needed time to reflect on what happened. Layla refused this statement, blaming the staff for what had happened. Aletha reminded Layla that it was her who dictated who the heir was, and not Layla. Layla agreed to take time and reflect, asking Alethea to look after Dr. Bebo until she returned. When Layla returned, she wished to finish the trials even with Alethea's apprehension. Eventually, Layla convinced her to allow her to finish the trials. After reliving Cassandra's memories of finishing the trials, Alethea awoke Layla, informing her that the interloper had arrived. Otzelberg then entered the room and briefed Layla on the things that had transpired since she had found Herodotus's lost histories. Layla tried to negotiate with Berg by using the staff to help his daughter Elena with her cystic fibrosis. Berg, though, interrupted and threatened Layla to hand over the staff. This threat started a fight between the two, which saw Layla beating Berg with the staff and then impaling his back with it, rendering him unable to move. As Berg passed out from his injuries, Layla took the communication device from Dr. Babo's body, made contact with the Altair II, and informed them of what had happened, requesting the team to pick her up from the vault. I know some might be wondering why I mentioned Cassandra as the character that gave Layla the staff of Hermes Trismegistus, and the simple reason is because the novel of Assassin's Creed Odyssey establishes Cassandra as the canon character. It also has been established in the last few months that Cassandra was meant to be the only playable historic character. Even with Cassandra being the canon character, that doesn't mean that Layla couldn't see Alexios at the end. If she spent that much time in the Animus seeing Alexios instead of Cassandra, it makes sense to me that the bleeding effect would superimpose Alexios over Cassandra in her mind. Layla is a character that is difficult to like. She's headstrong, stubborn, has a complete disregard for authority, and rarely takes responsibility for her own actions. We see this when she refuses to report to Abstergo, eventually leading to Deanne's death, which she blamed on Abstergo. And then, when she refused to heed Dr. Bebeau's warning about the bleeding effect, leading to the doctor's death. Although, add in the bleeding effect and what looks like an addiction to the animus, and Layla is someone that I have a hard time getting behind. When we first meet her, she's a new character that had potential after the last four Assassin's Creed games had unknown, silent lead characters in the modern day. But her story was given limited time and hid most of her backstory within emails that you had to go out of your way to read inside the game. Compare that to Desmond's first game. While he did have less time than the historical character, we were given enough dialogue to figure out where he came from, and the email system was used to build the world. Some might go so far as to say that Layla is a poorly written character in Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey. Personally, I don't think that's the case. I feel that Layla's issues as a character stem from hiding her backstory within her computer and not giving her a lot of game time. This makes her negative characteristics more prominent than others. And as Assassin's Creed Odyssey reaches its final DLC, Fate of Atlantis, it pushes her further into those negative traits and even opens the possibility of her being manipulated by Alethea. With everything that's happened to Layla so far, I'm excited to see where her story will go in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But there is one thing that I am sure. She won't die in Valhalla because of her appearance in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice has already been announced.
while I don't necessarily like Cassandra as a character, I do like that she is using Aya's hidden blade. That gives her a great connection to the history of Assassin's Creed, even though Aya and Layla were both introduced within Assassin's Creed Origins. There is one way that I could see Layla being saved in the eyes of many Assassin's Creed fans, and that is to truly show her being manipulated by Aletheia in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I don't believe that she would necessarily turn into a Templar or a antagonist because of her appearance in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice. I do believe that showing her as being manipulated by Aletheia and turning on Aletheia, it could possibly turn a lot of people onto her in a sympathetic way. But the one thing I do know about Layla's character in Assassin's Creed Valhalla is that I do trust the writings of Darby McDevitt. And only time will tell from today, the release of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on just where she is as a character moving forward. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, and you can find those links in this episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed, and to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.